right, what's up everybody? True Boxing here. Thank you for coming back to get here with the truth. So today we are doing the what's next on Jerron Boots Ennis, the IBF welterweight champion of the world at 147 pounds, following his dominant, I believe it was a ninth or 10th round TKO victory over Romain Villa as they uh, collided on uh, July 8th on Showtime. Now, before we get into that, if you guys could smash the like button, leave a comment, subscribe to the channel. I really do appreciate any and all support that I can get as I try to build my channel up here. If you don't like what I'm doing, you could always give me a thumbs down, let me know why, and we can go from there. But all that being said, let's jump into Boots Ennis and what he's been doing uh, and talk about it. So, Jerome Boots Ennis, you know, he had the big win right there over uh via to stay the ibf interim champion he's lined up to fight uh for the title um you know and a lot is gonna you know the, the big question is what's next for him though there's been a lot of guys saying they would fight him um you know they're not afraid to fight him but everything is dancing around the bud and and uh errol spence undisputed title showdown that's taking place this saturday actually on Showtime pay-per-view so everything is revolving around that fight you know and um if you you know it, it, it just whatever Boots does is going to be based on that so I'm going to go through the guys in the top 10 and and let you know what the possibility I think is based on each guy and then we'll go from there and see who uh could be next for Jerome Boots Ennis. So we start with, excuse me, the undefeated unified champion Errol Spence Jr. Now Spence is fighting Crawford this Saturday for the undisputed welterweight title. I personally have Crawford winning that fight. Check out my breakdown video if you want to see why. Um, but, you know, if Spence loses, you know, if he gets beat down, if he gets knocked out, is he going to want a rematch? Because there's a rematch clause in the contract for the loser. I have to believe that Errol Spence is going to be very upset if he loses and he's going to cash in on a rematch. So I don't see Spence fighting um, Boots in that scenario, obviously. But what if Spence beats Crawford? and beats him, you know, obviously Crawford would be next because he'd have an automatic rematch clause. Um, so, and I do believe that if Spence beats Crawford, he's either gonna catch him cold and stop him just out of nowhere. It's gonna be a, a real quick knockout, like not quick in terms of rounds, but he's gonna hurt him bad right away and jump on him and finish him. Or he's gonna win a close decision in either event. I think Crawford's gonna cash in on the rematch. So for me, I don't see Boots being next because Spence is, if the IBF were to order Spence and, and Boots to fight because Spence were to beat Crawford, then Spence would have the option to probably hold on to the belt if he guarantees Boots a, a, a shot or Spence is just going to have to give up that title and then Boots becomes the IBF champ. So for me, I don't see Spence and um, and Boots happening next because personally I think Spence is going to lose but even if he were to win I don't think it's going to be a blowout win over Crawford so I believe a rematch is going to happen between the two now next Terrence Bud Crawford the undefeated WBO champion right now he's fighting Spence this Saturday so I'm picking Crawford to win the fight I think he can stop Errol Spence in the late rounds now, if that happens, if if Terrence Bud Crawford proves that he's the man and he wins that fight by a knockout, um, will Errol Spence cash in on the rematch? I'm believing that Errol will, but if Crawford absolutely beats Errol down and it's a one-sided fight, Errol might say, nah, I'm good, I don't want a rematch, we can fight again at 154 or something, and then Crawford's going to be kind of in a dilemma there. What does he do? And for Crawford, I think he's going to potentially look at the WBC route 
especially if um, especially if Keith Thurman wins the mandatory position by defeating your Dennis Ugas, which that fight is not official, but they have been talking about that. I think Crawford might go that route, defend against Thurman because he's a name. Um, I don't know if he'd fight Ugas though, because what would be the point uh, after Errol dominated Ugas? Uh, so then I think the possibility could be there that Crawford and Boots lock horns because 150, the 154 option against Charlo doesn't seem likely or it doesn't really seem attractive now. Now that Charlo's moving up to fight Canelo and most people feel that Canelo's going to dominate Charlo. So a lot of pieces have to fall right, I guess is what I'm trying to say for Crawford and Boots. But I'm not going to say it's completely out of the realm of possibility. I just don't think it's going to happen. But it could. It definitely could. Then you got um, Boots against Ugas. I think Ugas would fight Boots. But, you know, a lot is going to ride on what happens with Spence and Thurman. You know, Spence and, and Errol. I mean, <laughs> Spence and Crawford. If, you know, the winner, if a rematch doesn't happen, do they fight, uh, do they fight the WBC mandatory? I, th I already said, I think Crawford maybe would fight one of them, but I don't think Spence, I, I think, uh, I think Spence or Crawford would fight Thurman. I don't really see the winner fighting Ugas for whatever reason, you know, so... If, if Ugas beats Keith Thurman and become the WBC interim or the mandatory challenger in the WBC, I don't think he's going to get the winner of Spence and Crawford. I mean, I mean, I don't think he's going to get the winner of Spence and Crawford. So, would Boots want to defend his title against Ugas? I think the possibility is there. Ugas is a former champ. Boots is trying to prove himself. I do think there is some potential there. But I also believe Boots wants to return before the end of the year. And Ugas and Thurman might not happen until they, they were saying August, but I'm I'm leaning towards since we're almost at the end of July, I'm leaning towards it could be August, it could be September now. So a lot riding on it. We gotta wait and see what happens. I'm hoping though that we do see, um, you know, a, a boots potentially fight a guy like Ugas. Now, next up is Keith Thurman. Would Keith Thurman be interested in Boots? To be honest, I don't think so. I think Thurman, even if he beats Ugas, he's going to want the winner of, of Spence and Crawford. And we know Thurman doesn't give a fuck about waiting around for his opponents. You know? So I'm thinking that if he doesn't get the winner of that fight, he'll just fight the next guy up for the WBC title. Or he'll be upgraded to champion because he'll be the interim champ because... I think Thurman and Ugas might be for the interim title. So I, I don't think Thurman wants that smoke with Boots. I really don't. Unless it's a much bigger fight, unifying belts, or uh, just a lot of money on the table. So I'm going to say no, Thurman wouldn't be interested. I'm on to Stanionis, the WBA regular champion. I think the possibility is there. Stanionis just came out and said that he would fight Boots. Um, he doesn't like tune-up fights. And with Virgil Ortiz, even though that fight, Virgil Ortiz still technically is the mandatory challenger, him passing out and feigning, I think has everything to do with him cutting down to 147. I think there's a big possibility that Virgil doesn't doesn't uh, doesn't cash in now, and they the WBA, you know, after Spence and Crawford clear their stuff up, you know, clear everything up. The winner of that fight might vacate the WBA title, and Stan Jonas might be upgraded to champ, and then you got Stan Jonas potentially the new WBA champion, and Jerron Boutanis potentially the new IBF champion, and they could go at each other. Because here's the key that I haven't said yet about Spence and Crawford. That fight could potentially be for the, um, you know, the rematch. If a rematch happens, which there's a high pot possibility of it, rematch could be happening um, for only a couple of the belts. I think once they establish Undisputed, I don't know if they're going to really care about holding on to all the belts after that for the rematch. They could. They definitely could. I'm just saying I think there's a possibility. So 
if unification is at stake between Boots and Stanionis, I think there's a high possibility. If it's not, I'm going to say no, but I wouldn't completely rule it out because they're both PBC guys. Then you got Virgil Ortiz. I don't see it. He's a golden boy guy. He's struggling to make weight. I don't think he wants anything to do with Boots yet, so I'm going to say no. Um, you know, I got Radza Butayev after that. Butayev would be down to take this fight, but he but he hasn't fought since he lost to Stanionis in April of last year. So I'm not sure Butayev wants to go right back in against a guy like Boots. So I'm going to say no. Um, Cody Crowley. This one's interesting because there's a lot of guys that say they want to fight Boots or they would fight Boots now until it comes time to fighting Boots. Here's the thing. Boots is the IBF interim champ. If he beats or if he... If the belt becomes vacant and he gets upgraded to champion, his highest rated contender right now is Cody Crowley, and he's with the PBC. Crowley might say fuck it and take the fight. I think there's a strong possibility Boots and Crowley fight for the end of the year. Just going to put that out there. And then he already stopped and beat Romain Villa. There's no point in a rematch. So after all this, where do I think that, you know, who do I think the likelihoods are? I think Cody Crowley is a high likelihood. I do. Um, I could see that fight potentially happening. And then after that, it's a crapshoot of a, a bunch of different possibilities. Um, you know, the Radza Butaya fight makes sense if Butaya can shake off some rust and return to the ring. Um, I, I might to stand Jonas potentially to unify belts. Then you got. Terrence Crawford, Errol Spence. Those are possibilities depending on if one guy beats the other guy down to where the loser doesn't want the rematch clause. And then your Dennis Sugas, you know, or Keith Thurman, whoever comes out of that mix right there. All possibilities, but again, it's all centered around what they are, you know, what happens in the Errol Spence and Terrence Bud Crawford undisputed title fight that's taking place this Saturday, July 29th on Showtime pay-per-view. So make sure you got your popcorn ready and you're paying attention to that fight because whatever Boots does is going to center around the results of that showdown right there. So that's it. That's what I got. That's my what's next on Jerome Boots and is following his dominating TKO victory over Romain Villa to retain the IBF interim welterweight title at 147 pounds. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, smash the like button, leave a comment, subscribe to the channel. I appreciate any and all support. This is True Boxing. You've been hit with the truth.